。嗨，大家午安。好，谢谢你们今天来到这边。那我们很开心有机会让来自瑞典的朋友，他们现在骑脚踏车在全世界移动。然后台湾是第十七个国家，他们。到不同的国家去为西沙拉拉这个国家发声，因为他们现在还在被摩洛哥占领，而且他们的很多难民是受到很不人道的对待。对，那待会就先就由他们来介绍。然后我们现在请大家掌声欢迎他们。Thank you. We're really happy to be here with all of you um, and uh, at this amazing library also. Yeah, so my name is Benjamin. I'm from Sweden and together with Sana, uh, we are biking very far. And uh, I have a history as a musician, so I know that the reason that these mics are having the round thing is because we have too much gain on them. So if we can lower the gain and up the master, that would solve it. Okay. <laughs> Do you mean the gain? The, yeah. Okay. Sound technician stuff. Okay. He said he was a musician. 那个待会呢？等一下我翻译，如果有卡住，请所有观众直接帮我。然后那个，如果待会有人要讲话，请大家拿麦克风，因为我们有整场录影之后，这个影片会放到 YouTube， 让更多人可以看跟关注这个议题。所以如果观众讲话没有拿麦克风，我们的那个后置人员还要一直后置这个字幕这样子。所以请大家一起帮忙。OK。This is a picture um, of us too. Uh, it was taken in Sweden over a year ago, the 15th of May last year. It was the day that we started biking around the world. We are biking through more than 30 countries, more than 30,000 kilometers. We have been going for more than one year now, and Taiwan is our 17th country. 好，那他们要在全世界移动超过三十个国家，超过呃三 thirty thousand 三万三万五千公里，然后要骑超过一大概一两年时间，现在已经一年多了，就是你们算一下五月十五到现在。So we actually left our bikes in Japan because it's very hard to fly with the bikes, <laughs> and we're only here for three weeks. 那台湾是他们的第十七个国家，他们把他们的脚踏车留在日本，因为要搭飞机带着脚踏车是真的很困难，所以就飞来台湾三个礼拜。We are doing this uh, journey uh, to raise awareness about Western Sahara. So let me ask you, have you heard of Western Sahara? Have you heard? About Western Sahara before? 他说他们这个计划就是为了要为这个西撒哈拉这个国家发声。那想问在场的人，有人过去有听过这个国家吗 ？Nobody. So it's very good that we're here then. 他说就是没有人，所以这这是为什么他们今天来到这里，真的太好了。And um, for starters, these are the flags of Western Sahara. If you were wondering what flags we're having on our backs. 好，那你们会不会好奇这个国旗呢？这个国旗就是西撒哈拉的国旗。And Western Sahara is the biggest colony remaining in our world today, and it's the last colony remaining in Africa. So we've been to 17 countries on this trip and met over 1,000 people, and only three people had recognized this flag on our trip. So it's a very underreported issue. People generally don't know about it. So they have now been to 17 countries, met over 1,000 people, and like they explain these issues, only three people know about this country, know about this country. So here are two maps of Africa at two different points in time. In 1945, almost all of Africa was colonized by European powers, whereas today there is only one remaining colony, the one in orange, up in the top left corner, Western Sahara. 好，这是两张非洲的地图在不同的时期。一九四五年，大家看到橘色的部分
大部分的非洲国家都还在被很多的欧洲的国家占领。那二零二一年这张地图，你看到只有剩下左上方橘色这一块还在持续被殖民占领，这就是西撒哈拉。So the United Nations, they have a list over countries that are still colonies, and Western Sahara is on this list, so it's an official colony, and it's been on the list since the 60s for a long time. 好，那这个联合国有一个国家的列表是还在被殖民的国家的清单。那西撒哈拉确实是有被写在这个清单上，代表说它是官方认证的被殖民国。And uh, we put two maps here so you can understand more exactly where it is. Western Sahara. It's close to Mauritania. It's close to Algeria. It's right underneath Morocco. And for the past around 50 years, it's been colonized by their neighbor Morocco. 呃，西撒哈拉旁边是这个毛利塔尼亚，上面是摩洛哥，然后还有靠近这个阿尔及利亚。那，呃，这个就是它的地理位置。And uh, during our talk today, we will mainly be talking about the occupied part of Western Sahara, which is here, and the Sahrawi refugee camps, which are in Algeria. And the situation is very different for the Sahrawi people in these refugee camps and in the occupied territories. And we'll speak about both of them, so keep in mind that difference. 好，那大家看到这个 Western Sahara 这个西沙的区域，它就是被占领的区域。那在阿尔及利亚这边，是不是看有些小的三角形？这些是西沙哈拉人的难民营，他们逃到了阿尔及利亚去住在那边。所以呢，在这两个地方的西沙人，他们有非常截然不同的生活处境，然后他们已经被占领五十年了。Okay. So the people of Western Sahara are called the Sahrawi people, and they are indigenous to this area, living there for thousands of years. 好，在西沙的人民主要是这个撒哈。Sahari 就是撒哈拉人嘛，对，那他们是几千年来都住在沙漠里面的原住民。And they are traditionally nomads, which means they move around with their animals, goats and camels.、Uh, but because they were colonized for so long, they were forced to move into cities and live、uh, like the European people. 那他们在过去是一个典型的游牧民族，他们到处迁徙，带着他们的骆驼啊、羊啊，到不同的地方居住。可是，在殖民之后，他们被强迫居住在城市里面，然后用欧洲人的方式在那个城市里面生活。They are Muslim. They are secular Muslim, which means that. They don't have a religious state.、Um, they don't pray at the mosque. They pray outside. It's private. Their religion. Secular means not very religious. Oh, but they are more open and free Muslim. They don't need to pray in their homes. They pray at home. Ah. 世俗系世俗穆斯林，好，那然后他们就是比较自由，有很多穆斯林比较传统的一些规矩，他们没有这样。And they speak Arabic, but they speak a dialect of Arabic that's called Hassania, and it's very different from the Arabic spoken in Morocco, for example. And、uh, they even can't understand each other. It's so different. 那他们讲的是阿拉伯语言的一种方言。那甚至阿拉就是讲阿拉伯语的国家，像摩洛哥人这些是没有办法理解他们的语言的。So the culture, the traditions,、uh, is very different. The Sahrawis from the Moroccans, it's not the same people.、Uh, ethnicity is also a bit different.、Uh, so they're they're not like the same people. 所以摩洛哥人跟这个撒哈拉人其实是非常不一样。So here is a picture of an old Sahrawi man living in the refugee camps in Algeria, and、uh, the Sahrawi people are very good at、uh, surviving and living in the desert since they have been there for so long. 好，那
这张照片是阿尔及利亚这个沙漠里面的难民营当中的撒哈拉人。那他们因为几千年来都在沙漠里面生存，所以他们其实非常善于在沙漠里生活。Uh, they told us a story when we were there, both me and Sana have been in the refugee camps, about an old man who claimed to be so good at navigation that uh, the Saharawis wanted to test him. So they drove him very far out into the desert with a blindfold on so he couldn't see where they were going. And uh, they put him outside and told him to walk back if he was so good at finding his way. And through uh, feeling the sand with his hands, he knew which direction they had gone and he knew which way to go back. Um, I don't know if it's a fairy tale, but it's an example of illustrating how good they are at navigation. Okay, so 所以他们就来考试，就是有一个人很自傲说哦，他是真的很会辨识方向。于是他们就把他送送送到一个很远的地方，然后把他眼睛蒙起来，看他能不能自己回家。然后他真的他真的可以靠着摸沙子的触感跟感觉那个环境，他完全可以知道方向，然后可以回到原本的地方。所以撒哈拉他说不知道这是不是一个传说，但撒哈拉人是真的可以借由。What we do know, however, is that they are able to find almost anywhere. We've been riding with them in cars when they're driving through the desert, and uh, as you can see, there are no roads where they are going. For us, it's impossible to know which way they are supposed to go out there, but they can drive for hours and still find their way. 我们不知道那个是不是传说，但这个是他们当时在阿尔及利亚经历的。你看是不是没有任何的路，没有任何的方向，然后也不知道要去哪里。但是他们的人就是真的可以这样一直开开好几好几个小时，然后到他们要去的地方。他们真的可以辨识方向。Uh, this is a picture of the refugee camps in Algeria. So the Sahrawi people have been living there for 50 years. 好，那这张照片就是阿尔及利亚的难民营。这些撒哈拉人在这里居住已经五十年的时间。There are about one hundred seventy-five thousand Sahrawis living in these camps. And the, the camps look like cities. They're so big. There are so many people living there. And you have to drive by car, like the video you saw, to be able to go between the different camps. And uh, when we were in the camps, we were staying with a Sahrawi family, and they took us to a trip out into the desert. Um, and they made bread, but they made it in a very special way. So as you can see, uh, they were making bread in the car, in the back of the car. Um, and then they put the dough of the bread uh, into a hole in the sand. Uh, and they lighted the fire, and then after they put sand on top of it, and it was bread after, I don't know, 30 minutes, one hour or something. So they're able to use the desert as their oven, and as anything that they needed for. Also, uh, according to Sahrawi tradition, they drink a lot of tea. And they drink tea maybe 10 times a day, uh, and they make it in a very special way that takes a long time. So uh, we asked them where they get their tea from, because obviously tea leaves, they don't grow in the desert. And they said the green tea that they drink, it comes from China. And we were very surprised that it had made its way that long, traveling throughout the continents, but it shows the interconnectedness between people 
that uh, even the Saharawis drink green tea. This is a traditional tent that she's in, and they have four openings, one to the north, one to the south, one to the west, and one to the east, because they always want guests to come, and it's always open. 那這是他們這個在那邊其中一個帳篷,那帳篷有四個出口,東西南北各一個,因為他們在那個意象上他們希望四面八方的朋友都可以來到這裡,就是很很歡迎的意思。Their culture of hospitality is so strong that they don't even have doors in their houses. Everyone is always welcome. 他們文化當中這個好客的這個習性是真的非常的強烈,所以他們的帳篷甚至沒有門,因為很歡迎你來。And uh, another interesting thing is that Sahrawi women are very strong in Sahrawi society. This is in the refugee camps because there they are free to have their traditions and women there are for example politicians, doctors, teachers, they're allowed to get divorced. Uh, and they're the leader of the household, so they make the decisions. Uh, I was fortunate enough in the refugee camps to witness a uh, wedding ceremony before the bride was getting married. This is like the party that they have in their house with all her friends and family, sisters, etc. That's how it looks like. Marriage. Yeah, before they get married, this is wedding. So they even have cake. I have no idea where they got the cake from in the middle of the desert, but they, they brought it there to celebrate. <laughs> and uh, they told us an interesting thing that uh, usually divorce is coupled with a lot of shame and nobody likes when divorce happens. So they try to break this culture of shame by also throwing divorce parties to make it more into a celebration event that uh, it happens for a reason and it's probably for the best, right, if it happens. This is a school in the camps, the refugee camps. So they have schools up to high school, but no universities. As you can see, uh, the children are sitting on the floor, some of them. It's because they can't ha afford enough tables and chairs. They don't have enough teachers and not enough classrooms. So the classes are very big. And they learn uh, Hassani in school, but they also have school in Spanish and uh, even one in English because there's a, a couple of Americans there teaching English. Um, so a lot of Sahrawi people speak a lot of different languages, and Spanish is their second language. 好,在當地其實老師也不夠,但是有美國人在教英文,然後有西班牙文的老師,然後他告訴他要講一個語言。And uh, a lot of them tell us that when they are little, like around 9 or 10, even younger sometimes, they leave the camps on the summer and they go and stay with Spanish, French or Italian families because it's too hot in the desert, it's like 50 degrees. So the families, uh, they have a program, summer program, and the, the children stay with them. Uh, 
计划可以让这些孩子到欧洲的国家去体验，呃，不同的生活，到西班牙、到法国的家庭，或者就是有组织会帮他们串联，然后把这些孩子送到欧洲去生活一段一个夏天这样子。And、uh, they are shocked because they, for example, have a shower and the water never stops flowing, but in the camps you have only a bag of water every month. And there are many things that shocks them because it's the first time they leave their home and they realize that they are refugees for the first time because children they can play anywhere, but it becomes a reality for them when they come to Spain or Italy that wow, my life is so different from other children.、Uh, I shouldn't live like this. 好，那这些孩子到了欧洲，到了法国、西班牙的时候，他们会很惊讶，说：“哎、欸，当地的孩子竟然可以自由的玩耍，然后有水可以洗澡，水龙头打开是有很多水流出来，因为在当地他们那个每个月配给的那个水量很少，因为在沙漠。对，而这也是这些孩子从出生到那个时刻，他们第一次意识到，原来他是一个难民。So it's important for them to leave in order to become. Uh, more political, I think, uh, and uh, like enjoying the struggle to get their country back. 好，那其实这个对他们来说很重要，因为当他们可以有那个政治的意识，然后未来可以为自己的国家挺身而出，把自己的国家要回来。And、uh, some of you might be wondering when we said that they speak Spanish as their second language, as to why in the desert would you speak Spanish? And it is because they were colonized by Spain for a hundred years, between the late 1800s up until 1975. 好，那呃，为什么在这个地方西班讲西班牙文是那个第二多的语言？为什么？呃，是因为西沙拉以前其实是西班牙的殖民地，大概在一八呃一八多少的年代，一直到一九七五年。But of course, nobody likes to be colonized. Everybody deserves the right to self-determination. So、uh, the Sahrawi people started fighting the Spanish colonizers, demanding that they go home and that they get independence in their own country. So, 当时候呢，呃，很多非洲国家也都有在抗议，或者有想要争取独立。他们也是，所以西沙拉人那个时候一直在抗争，想要脱离西班牙的统治。Now, at this time, in the mid 70s. Morocco also wanted to colonize Western Sahara, and it wanted to colonize big regions of North Africa because it claimed that historically it belonged to Morocco. A very dubious claim, according to historians. So,、uh, Spain had a dilemma. They were they faced pressure from the United Nations to decolonize Western Sahara, but Spain didn't want to. Uh, this part can help me. But first, I want to hear what you heard. Is 他说，在那个时候，其实摩洛哥想要占领西撒哈拉，呃，因为他们想要让他们的帝国，是那个摩洛哥帝国，就是可以扩张在北非的地区，所以他们想要占领附近的国家，对，然后。因为摩摩洛哥他们是主张那个那个土地是他们的，因为历史上就是他们说属于那个那个那个王王国，对那个摩洛哥王国，但啊、呃、历史历史学家就说很可以，所以有历史学家同意了，他不同意，他说很可以，可以，可以，很可以，说可以，可以，真的可以。So Spain chose to, rather than decolonize Western Sahara, to make an agreement with Morocco, letting Morocco colonize the country instead in exchange for some of the economic benefits that the land has. They have a lot of resources, and Spain wanted to continue to exploit those resources, but they let Morocco exploit them instead and got some money out of it. Because finally, they had a trade agreement on the economic side. 让摩洛哥从西班牙手中拿走了西沙拉,拉，然后去尝变成摩洛哥就是可以快取这些资源，然后是。西班牙
呃，就是西班牙就变成，因为当时应该是要让摩洛呃西撒哈拉独立，但是西西班牙他他有难民意在手，所以他后来是把西撒哈拉的土地交给摩洛哥，这样子的话可以从变成是摩洛哥殖民西撒哈拉。但是他西班牙可以拿好处嘛？对不对？啊、哦，对。反正就是西班牙可以拿资源，但是他后来给了摩洛哥，他们有一些协定之后，是变成摩洛哥去掠取之后再，再再给西班牙，好像他们有些协定这样。What kind of、uh, resources? So they they actually have a lot of fish,、uh, because the coastline is very long in Western Sahara, and、uh, fish, octopus, a lot of、um, products like that. That is、um, bought.、Uh, Morocco sells them to the EU, also to Japan, for example. They also have the world's、uh, biggest phosphate mine, and phosphate is used in fertilizer in agriculture business, and it's multi-million-dollar business. 好，那到底有什么资源呢？第一个是鱼，然后这个鱼他们可以呃卖到欧洲啊，卖到日本很多国家，因为他们是有一个呃有海岸线的国家。那第二个东西是一个专有名词，但是它好像是磷矿，磷矿石，它是那个就是农业上很重要的肥料。So 1975, Morocco invades Western Sahara together with Mauritania.、Um, that was also part of the deal, and they bring in、uh, hundreds and thousands of soldiers, civilians taking part in the invasion, and they bomb the country. Um, so of course, Sahrawi normal civilians they have to flee from the bombs. A lot of them die.、Uh, Morocco is also using like chemical weapons that burns their skin. So that's why there are refugee camps because people fled to Algeria to escape the bombs. 好，所以当时候在一九七五年那个前后，最后摩洛哥，所以毛利塔尼亚也一起进攻，对不对？ They both. Mauritania they join them or they attack the Mauritania? Okay. Now Mauritania just from Mauritania, 这边入侵西撒哈拉，然后用很多军事的武力，包括炸弹啊，然后用很多方式去，就是去伤害当地的人民，所以他们就必须要投降。那有很多人就逃到了阿尔及利亚的沙漠，所以就形成了难民。So there was a war for 16 years, and Morocco left after a, only a couple of years because they lost against the Sahrawis. Yeah, Mauritania. Yeah, Mauritania left,、um, and the、uh, Sahrawi people they had their own independence movement called Polisario, and Polisario was are used to the desert. They know how to fight in the desert, not as much as the Moroccans, for example.、Uh, 等一下，你帮我一下，不过我脑袋有点打。Should I say again or okay? So um, there was a war. For 16 years, between the Sahrawi people, and they have a independence movement. It's called Polisario. So this is the Sahrawis, the Polisario, were fighting against Morocco and Mauritania for 16 years. And during these 16 years, Mauritania left because they lost the part that they were occupying.、Um, but the Morocco, Morocco did not leave. They continued the war with. With Sahrawis, and they fought for 16 years. 好，就是反正他们这场战争其实打了十六年啦。那最后这个毛利塔尼亚，他们先离开，就是他们有占领一部分，但是他们后来先撤退。但摩洛哥就继续一直进攻，一直跟他们的人抗争。那当地也形成了一个类似武装反抗的行动，有一个名，有一个他们这个名词，自治的一个自治的。反正就是某一个呃反抗团体、反抗的一个抗争行动，就是他们其实也一直在对抗摩洛哥，而且这个战争其实就是真的很久，十六年。And、uh, before the invasion, Morocco actually asked permission to invade Western Sahara from the 
UN, an International Court of Justice, and they basically did research about Western Sahara and Morocco to see if there are any connections, um, and they said, no, you cannot invade because Western Sahara is not Moroccan. It's actually its own territory, its own people. They deserve to be independent or choose to be independent, so you cannot invade. The day after they invaded, so it's not like internationally, uh, most people agree. I mean, all the international law agrees that it's an illegal invasion, an illegal occupation. Because of this, there was a lot of pressure to stop the war. They told Morocco, stop fighting. Gueho 所以等于是在国际上是不被统一，而且也有非常多的争议。So finally, about 30 years ago, 1991, Morocco agreed together with the Sahrawis that they would do a referendum, like vote, that the Sahrawis would be able to vote if they want to be independent, and this would happen together with the help of the UN. They would help create a referendum in Western Sahara. 然後三十年前其實有在當地舉辦一次公投但 still today that vote never happened. Morocco never had any interest of holding a vote. Rather, they delayed and delayed this process, and during that time, they moved Moroccan people into Western Sahara settlers to try and get the Moroccan people to be outnumbered the indigenous Sahrawi people. So the way we can understand Western Sahara is through a settler colonial framework. Morocco is a settler colonial country who is trying to make Western Sahara into Morocco, whereas Nobody agrees that it is Morocco, and the people of Western Sahara is resisting this. That we can think about this question. Settler colonial. It's, for example, like China and Tibet, or U uh, Ukraine and Russia. Like they send their own people in to make it seem like U Ukraine is Russian, or Tibet is Chinese, or Western Sahara is Moroccan. They want to like make it that their people are more than the indigenous people. And what this means for the Sahrawi people, this picture is taken 50 years ago, 1975, in the refugee camps when they were just created. That picture is taken just last year. They have been there waiting to return to their country, but uh, because nobody really knows about their ship, it means that nobody is taking any action to give them their freedom. And, uh, their situation is just waiting in the desert, languishing, waiting to be independent. The right-hand-side-picture-picture-picture-picture-picture-picture-picture-picture-picture-picture-picture-picture-picture-picture-picture-picture-picture-picture-picture-picture-picture-picture-picture-picture-picture-picture-picture-picture-picture-picture-picture-
and uh, we didn't know about Western Zara all of our lives. We are from Sweden. <laughs> it's very far from Western Zara. Uh, so we want to explain a little bit about how we learned and why we are biking for Western Zara. So this is a picture of me. I was elected into the city council in Sweden when I was 21 and uh, all of the other politicians were like 60. <laughs> so I learned to fight early in my life. <laughs> And uh, even though I am born in Sweden, uh, my parents are born in Kurdistan, the Kurdish part of Iran, and they came uh, before I was born to Sweden. So I always grew up with stories about uh, their life and uh, they have not been able to return for 40 years because there's a dictatorship in Iran and they would be killed if they go there. Same for me, so I have never been there. Uh, so these were stories I would hear when I was growing up, so I became very interested in the world and politics. You mean they cannot go back to Iran? Oh, how? Tasha在瑞典长大,但是他的父母亲呢是来自伊朗的库德族,在伊朗有一个库德族的区域,他的父母是从那边算是逃到瑞典,那他从小虽然在瑞典这样子的国家长大,但是会不断的听到家人在
uh, it's like, what it feels like to be born in the camps and to hear your grandmother and grandfather talk about your country, but never you have been there yourself and you can only live in their memories. You can't see it for yourself. And it's the same for my parents and me. Like they told them, tell me stories, but I don't know because I have never been there. So I am also living in their memories. So I really recognized this in them when they were talking about it and and we connected in this way um, and i yeah i felt like this is so important uh, this topic especially because so few people know about it阿公阿嬤啊去感受这个生活，所以当他得知他们的故事的时候，他就有办法马上跟他们连接。And I actually was not a biker. <laughs> I didn't know how to bike before this project. So funny story. Uh, for, first, like we were together, me and Benjamin, we're a couple. And our first date, he taught me how to bike. Like we rented bikes, and he taught me how to bike. And I was falling. I was like biking into. The wall, like I was really bad at biking, uh, but still we thought we need to do something extreme for people to know about Western Sahara. And it's not extreme to just go and protest outside in Sweden. It's more extreme to bike around the world. <laughs> so that's what we thought. Let's do it. Benjamin教他怎么骑脚踏车 so for me, I've been a human rights activist for maybe seven or so years now, and uh, I haven't always been aware of Western Sahara and uh, places in the world. I started my life being a musician, and uh, I thought I was just going to play music actually most of my life when I was a teenager. But as you know, you don't earn a lot of money as a musician, so I got another job as well as a fundraiser for the Red Cross, the humanitarian organization. And through that job, I had to talk about what's happening in Syria and Afghanistan and different countries in Africa. And I was fairly ignorant at the time and felt like I had to study a lot to be able to speak about these places. So I started to read. And one case in particular caught my attention because I had a colleague who was from Palestine. So he told me many stories about how his family had been forced out of their land back in the 40s, late 40s, when Israel forced almost one million Palestinians out of Palestine. And those people are still refugees today. The Palestinian people are the biggest refugee population in the entire world today. Now, 
So I started looking into what's happening there, and if you read any human rights reports produced by any organization, including the Israeli ones, uh, it's shocking if you haven't read it before. And uh, it shocked me, so I decided to do a project for Palestine where I walked all the way from Sweden to Palestine through 14 countries. And that walk took me about a year to complete. You, you, you ride bicycle, you walk. So he decided to go to Sweden, then he took the bus to the Palestinian city, and he went all the way to Palestine. It was about 5,000 kilometers. And then about 5,000 kilometers. And during that time, I was contacted by people from Western Sahara who saw my project on uh, Facebook. So they wrote to me, like, you're working for an occupied country, you should also come here because we are also occupied. Then,呃，you totally spent the same amount since like like seven like one year。所以他大概走了一年的时间，然后穿越好像十四个国家，然后就从瑞典到巴勒斯坦。那在他还在进行这个计划的时候，就有人透过Facebook这个他的page、他的
绑架哦，反正就是绑架虐待，就是各种这种武力呀、啊，很不合理的暴力对待。所以当地的沙西沙拉人为了要跟外国人讲话，他们愿意这样子做是非常勇敢。Uh, it was a very adventurous um, experience, let's call it that, and eventually they succeeded in uh, losing the Moroccan police. It was a very impressive endeavor on their part, and I could meet and finally speak in private to the Saharais. How many hours that they drove? I don't know. I was panicking the whole time. <laughs> and uh, when uh, I finally had a moment of silence to speak with the Sahrawis, the people that came and spoke to me, um, when they were children, they had been beaten by the Moroccan teachers. When they were youth, they had been beaten by the Moroccan police on the streets. And when they were adults, they had been imprisoned for long times because they were demanding the freedom of the Sahrawi people. The uh, Sahrawi women who Morocco puts in prison are often sexually violated and raped by Moroccan soldiers, the men as well, and they are tortured in grave ways, too vicious to put in words. Morocco does this to try and break their spirit so that they will stop demanding their independence and their freedom and uh, accept Morocco as their masters, which they refuse. I remember meeting one man who had just gotten out over 20 years in prison and this grave uh, treatment. And the first thing he did was going back to demonstrate for his freedom. It's difficult to describe their courage in words. I don't think none of us would ever understand what they're going through or how brave they are. But it inspires us, me and Sana, to keep our project going. We are tired sometimes. It's hard to bike. It's hard to be away for two years. But when we think of them, what we're doing really is a little thing compared to their courage and bravery. So they really活得很多勇敢，所以我们没有办法想象的。所以也因为这些经历，让他们真的愿意，呃，当他们来这样子远离家乡，就是两年时间骑脚踏车，虽然会累，然后会有很多挑战、辛苦，但他觉得他们的
东西，就是如果政府用不对的方式对待人民，或是他们有很多不对的政策，他们终止的时候都不是因为政府决定要好好对待你们，而是人民开始做反抗的动作。所以大部分的人权都是透过很强烈的抗议去得来的。As you know, women were not allowed to vote in most countries in the world. And uh, it was women who protested uh, and demanded the right to vote, uh, and not the government who gave them without any ask. We talked to uh, South Africans. Uh, we were staying with the uh, ambassador from South Africa in Tokyo, and he told us that uh, without the help of people all over the world protesting, apartheid in South Africa would still remain. White and black people would still have to use different toilets. But it's because people boycotted, they didn't buy products from apartheid South Africa in many, many countries, and they really put pressure on the apartheid regime. 然后他说他在日本有跟那个南非的这个大使对话，然后他说，呃，南非那时候不是有很严重的隔离政策嘛，是白人要怎么样，黑人要怎么样，然后要把他们分开啊这些。那这个政策的结束，其实跟世界各地很多人知道这件事，然后他们有呃一个行动，就是拒买，拒绝购买当地从非洲过来的物品这些。那这些行动确确实实的影响了南非的政府。East Timor, that uh, you might have heard of, is the youngest country in Asia. They got their independence only 20 years ago, and they were occupied by Indonesia. They were occupied the same year, actually, as Western Sahara. And people didn't know about it. But because there was protests, and journalists helped uh, to get movies or documentaries about East Timor on TV, uh, that was actually what changed the situation. And we think we need to do the same for Western Sahara. 哦，大家知道这个国家怎么翻译吗？东帝汶。哦，好，那右下角这张照片就是亚洲现在最年轻的国家东帝汶，他们呃脱离殖民才二十年的时间，从印尼的首都呃独立，那所以他们现在在为西沙拉做的事情也是一样。So we are doing our best with raising attention about Western Sahara. And here are some pictures from all around the world where we've done many projects on the way. Uh, here is in Korea, for example, we're speaking to people on the streets in every country. Uh, here is in Slovenia, doing uh, public talks in the library. Uh, here is from Germany. We also do demonstrations. This is outside the European Commission, an important building, an important institution. Up uh, there is a university class in Denmark. So we speak at many, many universities all over the world. Uh, here is the radio. Of course, the journalists is an important part in raising awareness. And uh, we're reaching out to the media all over. And finally, in Montenegro, country in Europe, where we met some human rights organizations, which they've also done in every country we have traveled through. Yeah, that was a lot of countries, wasn't it? This他說的這個歐盟的是這個是歐盟什麼就是好像德國的一個歐盟中心歐盟委員會OK然後左上角是在德國大學他們在世界各地去呃丹麥的大學他們去了很多很多大學然後中間上面是哪一個哪一個電
heard about Japan, I guess. <laughs> we, we've done a lot of uh, university lectures in Japan because there's actually a support group for Western Sahara in Japan. In Japan, we even met a journalist who had written an article about Western Sahara, and she showed us a letter that she got from the Moroccan embassy, a threat that she should stop writing about this. Uh, we also met Japanese parliamentarians who have been threatened by the Moroccan embassy because they want to speak about Western Sahara. So even in Japan, they are threatened by Morocco if they talk about Western Sahara. So they have a Japan but what we found impressive and inspiring in Japan was that there is a big group who is supporting a people on the other side of the planet. We thought, how did they know about Western Sahara? We were very surprised. So we thought that if the Japanese can do it, having a history as a colonizing country, uh, probably the Taiwanese can do it as well, having a history as a colonized country and knowing what it's like to be under oppression, the constant threat of invasion, and having a long history with different colonizers. So we wanted to show a video of how we have been biking uh, so far and where we will bike uh, after we leave Taiwan. Like I said, we are not biking in Taiwan, unfortunately, because uh, it was too hard to bring the bikes. So we started in Sweden and went through Denmark, Germany, Czech Republic, Austria, Slovenia, Slovakia, Croatia, Bosnia, Montenegro, North Macedonia, Albania, Greece, Turkey. We had to take the plane to South Korea because we didn't bike to China or Central Asia. We will go to Hokkaido by bike, um, and then Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam. From Vietnam, we fly back to Europe, to Italy, and then Italy, Switzerland, France, Andorra, Spain, Portugal, and then we take a boat to Algeria, and we bike 2,000 kilometers to the refugee camps. So it will take two and a half years, so we will be in the camps December next year. So we have been on the road for a year up until this point. We've had uh, a wealth of experience. It cannot be summarized in a small talk like this. 
but uh, just some snapshots. We have been camping quite a lot all over the world, sometimes very scary with wild animals and you don't know where you are oftentimes. Our bikes uh, weigh quite a lot. Uh, Sana's bike and luggage weighs 40 kilos. And my bike and the luggage weighs 60 kilos. So when we go up the mountains, it's very difficult. Uh, due to climate change, it's been extremely hot as well since we started, so we're uh, perishing under the uh, very harsh sun sometimes. But uh, you can't do much when you're biking, you just have to continue. And we showed you before the, the where we are going. We just wanted to say that unfortunately we will not be able to bike to Western Sahara, only to the camps. And the reason why is because three years ago the war between Sahrawis and Morocco started again. So there are drones actually from China, <laughs> flying here, so it's quite difficult for us to go there. Mm, they buy drones from China. Okay. There's also this red line that you see here that cuts through the entire country. That's a wall. It's 2,700 kilometer long wall. It looks like that. 是摩洛哥政府他改的，那这个墙的长度有两千七，两千七百，两千七百公里。And the wall was built by Morocco with the help of Israel to make it hard for the Sahrawis to come to this side. So it separates Sahrawi people on this side and this side. There is also 10 million landmines and 100,000 Moroccan soldiers guarding the wall. Israel built the wall, helped to build the wall. And this wall is uh, big. It's the second biggest wall in the entire world. And it is the biggest wall that is still active. You know which the longest one is, of course, the one in China. But that was built a long time ago, and China isn't using it. But this wall is being used today as a wall. So in that sense, it's the biggest military fortification that's active. So here on this side, this is occupied by Samsara. Eighty percent of the country is under occupation, which means that the people who live here, uh, they are not allowed to study at university. There's no universities here. They are not allowed to become journalists. There's no journalists in Western Sahara. There's no human rights organizations. They're not allowed to form companies or associations. And they're not allowed to meet more than four people. Otherwise, they are arrested and beaten. Wow. 
那这个墙内没有人可以当记者，没有记者。然后也没有人可以开店，呃，没有人可以做生意，然后开公司，然后没有人，也没有任何的人权组织，而且他们被规定不能见超过四个人，你只要被发现见了超过四个人，你就会被政府抓走。So it's、uh, the same level as North Korea political rights in occupied Western Sahara. Compared to that, the camps, the refugee camps in Algeria. They have their own government and they are free to express themselves and do journalism, for example. 好，那在这个区域，在西沙哈这个区域的人，他们生活基本上跟北韩差不多，但是他们是被呃摩洛哥殖民占领，然后再过这样的生活。不过在阿尔及利亚沙漠里面的这些难民，他们生活就很不一样。虽然是难民，可是他们有自己的政府，然后他们有很多自由，跟他们至少有他们的权利。So we hope that by now you're beginning to have the same feeling as we had once upon a time many years ago. That how is it that the world's biggest colony that I didn't know about it, that people don't know about it, the world's biggest wall, how come I didn't know that even existed, that people don't know, and one of the world's biggest minefields also. Like how come all of these things are that just nobody knows that they exist? We asked ourselves that question and decided to do something about it. 那大家现在听到这边，可能会跟他们在多年前第一次得知这个讯息的时候一样有这样的想法，就是说，当，就是说世界上有最大的殖民国，我们不知道；然后有最大的这个军事长城，我们不知道；然后有最大的这个地雷场，我们也都不知道。So here are some of the landmine victims uh, because of the landmines that Morocco placed along the wall every, every year. Twenty people step on them. 然后因为摩洛哥会在那个长城外面埋很多地雷嘛，然后这些是一些受害者，像有大概二十个人踩下去。And uh, in the refugee camps, uh, we just want to show you the power of individuals that we can really do something just as normal people. Um, we visited, for example, a boxing club, and it was started by an Italian man who was a boxer who went to the refugee camps and discovered that children have nothing to do here. So he brought them some uh, boxing sacks and the gloves, and started giving some lessons. So now there's a club for boxing there, just because one man went there. 那大家这边要分享一些以个人的身份在难民做很多事情的人，像左下呃右下角是一个意大利人，他本身就是拳击手，所以当他到难民营发现这边孩子是很无聊，他们其实没有什么可以做的事情，他就帮他们建了这个拳击场，所以孩子至少可以在这边练习。And、uh, this is a library that one Saharawi woman created by herself. She thought that it's a shame that we don't have libraries in the refugee camps. So she, when she was in the U.S., she brought back many books to the refugee camps and said, "I want to build a library." And some people helped her, but because of her initiative, there is now a library there. So one person can create many things. So she says, "She's people, Sahrawi people." 那那这是一个当地的西沙的女人，她觉得当地应该有一座图书馆。这是会听到声音吗？然后他在美国念书的时候，他就从美国带了很多书回到这个难民营，所以这个地方有了第一座图书馆。所以大家不要觉得一个人没有什么力量，因为事实上一个人可以做很多很多事情。There is also a hospital in the camps, and the people from Spain and Italy and Cuba go there、uh, to help train them to become doctors and help with health care. So during this trip, we're also Trying to find doctors who want to go to the camps and help. 嗯，然后当地有医院啊，里面有西班牙、意大利啊，或是古巴的医生在，呃，在治病人，也有在当地教他们的人怎么去治病。所以他们现在在旅行也到处在找医生，就是哎，谁谁谁，要不要去难民营当医生 ？And、uh, there's one project, also a Sahrawi man who made this.、Uh, so in the camps, it's hard for them to have food. Because it's in the desert, so they are dependent on the UN for food. They bring them food. So this man, he found a way to grow vegetables in the middle of the desert using very little water. And we went there, and he showed us carrots that he drew from the sand. And he's teaching families how to do it so they can grow their own vegetables also. 
那当地人其实他们的食物供给量是很受限于这个联合国的配给量，所以那有一个人是哪一个？他是哦，当地人他有这个技术，对不对？他研发出这个技术，就是怎么用很少的水量可以在沙漠里面种出这些菜，所以他就会教更多人，然后让他们可以自己种菜，然后有更多的食物可以用。We call him、uh, the magician. You remember the video of us driving in the desert? It's in that desert that he's growing plants, and for us, that's just magic. There's also festivals in the camps every year. There's the Sahara Marathon, so people run in the desert, and not when it's summer, but when it's a bit colder. And people from all over the world go there, and they stay with families, learn about Sahrawi culture, and they run or walk if they want to. 那在当地的难民也有一些活动，像这个是每年会举办的马拉松赛跑，所以全世界的这些跑者会来到这边进行比赛，并且认识他们的处境。然后不是在最热的时候举办，或是在天气比较凉的时候举办。There's a film festival, so you can go there and watch films, and also film people from other countries go there, and an art festival. So this is a way for the Sahrawi people to bring international people to them. Because it's not so easy for them to travel, so they want people to come to them and learn about their culture. Ah, that 右上角是他们有那个电影节，然后底下这张照片是艺术节。这些是一些当地的活动，可以让全世界的人来到这边，因为他们很难出去旅行，所以他们希望有全世界的人来，然后来认识他们。So we know there's a lot of interesting projects that can be done in both the camps and the occupied territories. So a goal with our biking is that in every country we go to, we want to find new projects we can do together with people like you. Like what can we do in Taiwan, for example? So we have met people all over Taiwan who have become interested in Western Sahara, and uh, we are having a meeting together to discuss what practical things we can do from here. Uh, a workshop. It will be in Taipei on the nineteenth uh, of August. I know it's very far away from here, but of course you're welcome to participate. Uh, if you can't make it, we'll have more meetings also online, so you're welcome to participate on those. And in order for us to communicate, I will be sending around my phone, uh, so you can type in your email address if you're interested, and then you will receive invitations and also our newsletter where we write about this place, so more information. 好，那他们在八月一号抵达台湾，预计八月二十号离开。那目前已经在啊、呃、台北啊、北埔啊、宜兰很多地方有进行的，遇到很多人。那他们就希望在最后离开台湾之前，让大家聚集在一起，然后讨论看看有什么实际的作为，我们可以就是有兴趣。他们好，重讲，他们在台湾遇到很多对这个议题已经有兴趣的人，所以他们就希望在离开台湾前。最后这些人可以聚集在一起，我们一起讨论有什么实际的作为是我们可以合作去帮助这些难民的。那如果他说他知道台北很远，因为这个八月十九号下午的活动在台北很远，但如果大家真的想参与，都有线上的一些讨论
because if we are to create a better world, we need to get to work. It doesn't create itself, and it requires dedicated individuals to put in the time and work. And when they do, the world starts to change, and we hope that we will all be a part of that change. And having said that, we want to thank you. Yeah, thanks for listening. And please, if you have any questions, we're happy to answer them. I wanted to say thank you to Yvonne because she helped the translation with the papers. Yvonne, you, uh, yeah. Oh, thank you. It was you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Just your representation is finished, and if you have questions, feel free to ask. She wanted to know the timing that when you know Western Sahara and when you started to want to ride bicycle throughout the whole world for that and until you really make it like she wanted to know the timing. Like a timeline? Yeah, a timeline. Like what year or like how long? Like uh, when you know it and how long it takes like oh. you think about this about and how long it takes you really make it like yeah. And I told you. So for me I first heard about Western Sahara. in uh, 2018 and it's 2023 now so it took five years from having first heard about it to be biking about it <laughs> but when when do you start to think about biking for them uh, i started thinking about it um, i don't know a couple of years after i heard about it because of the pandemic, we weren't able to do this project. So the idea was to start in Japan, actually, and bike from Japan to Western Star without flying. Uh, but then the pandemic came, Corona. So Japan closed, almost every country in the world closed. War in Ukraine, war in Myanmar. Suddenly we couldn't do our plan. So we had to wait for until last year before Finally, countries started to open. That's why it took a long time to do the project. I think the COVID is 2020, right? 2020, right? Okay. That was the year it was supposed to happen. The so it's actually very quickly. Like he knows it like, in 2018 that you already started to almost going to start in 2020. Yeah, okay. and I think I heard about it 2017 or something, but I didn't think of doing a project then. Mm. 他是二零一八年的時候然後他們其實原本這個計劃是就是他好像三百是二零一七那时候有知道但是还没有想到计划然后二零一八所以到二零一九已经都已经准备好要去骑脚踏车对就两三年的时间只是因为疫情然后到去年才正式从瑞典出发
after you after you decided that you wanted to go biking around the world, and there was COVID, right, the pandemic, so you couldn't go out. What do you do during that time? During that period of time, like start the fundraising. <laughs> 出发以后，但是因为 COVID 来了，那在COVID这段期间有没有做什么事情？嗯，during years before we actually went to Japan to try and start planning. Uh, we had a million ideas. Of course, we haven't done all of the ideas. We spoke about them. And yeah, we did webinars. Uh, immediately, we started doing webinars about Western Sahara. And uh, we invited really high-profile people. So uh, the UN envoys, for example, have been uh, working trying to resolve the conflict. Uh, we've had uh, webinars with uh, almost all of them. They change every four years. And they've told us some very interesting things. Basically, they are very angry at Morocco because Morocco stopped the process. And all of these webinars are available on YouTube, on our Solidarity Rising page on YouTube. If you're interested in getting deep into the details of this place and why it hasn't been resolved yet. Uh 好，那那个呃，想那个想要问大家说有没有知知道任何地方，就是也是类似像西哈拉沙这样子的一个状况。
。OK， 好，那我刚刚分享的是我之前在二零二零的时候也曾经，呃，刚好。呃，就是到泰泰缅边境，泰国缅缅甸的边境，台湾有一个组织叫那个边境协会，对，那他们其实一直长期有进驻在那个地方，然后帮助，呃，因为在泰缅边境那里有一个城镇叫美索。对，那那个地方其实因为那时候很多刚好离就是反正就是就隔着一条小河而已，所以很多在缅甸战乱的时候，其实有很多缅甸的人就逃难到泰国来。对，那这些逃到泰国来以后，那里也有一些难民营，收容了一些难民，但是有一些没有到那没有办，因为难民已经人太多了，所以有一些就是变成是。住在泰国的黑户，他们就是呃从小就是可能有一些是长大过来的，有一些就是在泰国出生，那都他们基本上就是没有任何的身份证，对，所以那因为他不是泰国的公民，所以他们当然也就不能在那里求学，不能在那里工作，对。那台湾的这个组织，他们在那里有成立了一些呃边境学校，哎，他不是正式的学校，但是他们就透过这些学校，然后让学让这些缅甸孩子可以上学，那。呃，但目前因为他们还是没有身份，所以比较比较辛苦。他们上了学以后，其实没有大学可以念，那工作其实都是只能做黑户。他们他们目前都还没有办法正式成为一个有身份的人，这样。Animal ethnic part in Thailand. They are the first one to tell people, like to to rescue elephants and also to tell people not to touch them. In in that in their park, they have rescued like uh, 155 elephants. And because the they are famous, a lot of funding, a lot of tourists come to the elephant park. So they also take care of 2,000 cats and uh, 700 dogs and a lot of other animals. It's a huge park, and also they hire those refugees to work in the elephant park. Yeah, yeah. 就是我刚刚分享过，在青海有一个大象园区，其实很有名，它叫 Nature Elephant Park。那这个园区是泰国最有动物权的一个园区，它是泰国第一个开始救援这些因为观光受伤的大象，然后去倡导这些。权力的园区，包括他现在是在泰国第一个提倡不要再摸大象的园区。对，那他们除了救援一百五十五只大象之外，他们后来因为很有名，然后有更多的预算，他们也救援了两千只猫、七百只狗，跟里面还有很多的水牛、上百只的水牛，跟很多很多的动物。然后他们也录录用这些难民来工作，对，还蛮感人的，在泰国。然后我其实有在规划要做一个旅行。看，就为了看这个 park， 因为我在那个 park 的时候，我发现没有任何的亚洲人，他感觉完全是白人，就全部都是外国人，然后也没有中文翻译，里面没有中文的东西，所以我就觉得应该可以带台湾人去。So I was actually planning a trip to bring Taiwanese people to that park because when I was there, everything is English, and all the people I met are foreigners. I never, I didn't see any Asia, like really few, and they don't have. Anything in Chinese, tour in Chinese. So I was thinking to bring kids there from here and yeah, to make them to see how they help animals. And, yeah, I was planning. Ah, 有没有人要分享？刚刚他们不是说你们还有知道哪些国家有类似的处境？大家要分享吗？你想问？好，那那你让我讲一下好了，让我那个一下。I I think so far I already have speaker from Tibet and also a little bit related to their situation and Tibet and Turkey. One guy is helping Turkey refugee and the other one also a girl helping the Palestine and uh, I I mean and also we we once have a, a guy from Myanmar and he shared about his country. What happened in Myanmar? So uh, that's what I know from those people. 我刚刚分享说，泰美到目前为止，我邀过的人里面有那个西藏的一个讲师，就是李希志文，他上次讲内容大概只有蛮多部分有讲到他们西藏人逃亡的故事，然后就是借由他的讲座会了解西藏的难民，然后之前有请过那个裘振宇，他讲那个台湾中心在土耳其，他们是在帮助附近的叙利亚难民。
非常讲究之外，之前还有来过一个女生，她其实在做巴勒斯坦难民的计划，跟另外一个来泰美分享的男生是缅甸人，然后他是在分享缅甸到底发生了什么事。就到目前为止，我们办的讲座大概有这些。My parents didn't want me to do this project, <laughs> uh, so they they have tried to stop it several times. Um, uh, yeah, they 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 always say that they wish I would be home instead, that I shouldn't be biking around the world. Uh, but I just don't listen to them. So. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. He said his parents actually didn't want him to do this project, so they tried to stop him many times because they think he should stay in Sweden and work and work in your country and not go around the world. They think it's very dangerous. But he didn't want to do it. Our parents are very nice people. They don't want to do it. 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 They Kind of do what, yeah, I don't know. Like you're safe, but also have this pressure. I think I, when you talk about Taiwanese, like how it's for my family, like okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. But his parent is Swedish, and Swedish parents are more not like this. They're more like, you know, it's imp important to be independent and do what you want. It's very different. <laughs> 他的父母，他说他们两个人的父母的反应是非常不一样，因为他的父母是库德族嘛。那库德族他们的传统的家庭跟我们台湾人比较像，就是比较会想要孩子是安全啊，就是，诶、欸，我们台湾的这种父母会控制孩子，或是很过度关心，或是会去呃想要你要听我的这个现象，在他们也是差不多，可是。瑞典的爸爸妈妈会是完全不同啊，对吧？当然你要独立啊，你去做你想做的事啊，去去去去这样，这是完全不同的态度。然后上次其实我们有聊到这个，然后 Benjamin 是说他的父母是很以他为荣，然后觉得他做这个很棒。哎 ，I say last time we talked about this, and your parents are proud of you, and they want they are like supporting, right? Yeah, my mom is used to being. Disappearing for long periods of time. <laughs> I I walked to Palestine once, so she got used to me being away. And now that I'm biking, she's like, yeah, he's doing that again. Okay. <laughs> it's really sweet. Every time you talk on the phone, she always says, "I'm so proud of you. Like I admire you. I'm inspired by you. Like all of these things." 好，然后他说他妈妈已经习惯他都不在啊，因为上次走路去那个巴勒斯坦是很久都不在家，然后现在在环游世界骑脚踏车也不在家。但是莎娜说他妈妈是真的很、很、很、很温暖啦，就是每次他们在讲电话的时候，他妈妈就会说：“哦，我真的好以你为荣，然后你要加油啊。”然后他都觉得好温暖这样。接续刚刚这个问题，就是像日本有收到就是摩洛哥那方面的威胁，那不知道你们有没有收到？然后另外一个部分就是比较无关，就是那这个整个计划的经费跟当地的串联是先想好了吗？还是说因为不见得每个国家都在都有人或者组织像日本那样去关心这件事情嘛？那是都先去每个国家先串联好，还是说到当地再看这样？或是如果没有这个，这国家没有这个，这个可以接的这个平台的话，那是怎么进行？所以你是好奇他们怎么在这个国家做串联，还是他们的资金怎么？他们怎么？一个是，对对对对对， okay, 那就有三个问题啊，对对对对，谢谢。She has three questions. The first one is, um, Brits. huh? Brits. 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 Brits.
journalists or politicians, they get a screen from more local government. Did you also experience the same thing? Well, on social media, we get uh, hate messages and sometimes threats from Moroccans uh, pretty much on a daily basis. It's, all, it's impossible, of course, to know if it's orchestrated by the Moroccan government, but uh, sometimes it's such a huge scale, so we're wondering if it's organized somehow, and who else than the Moroccan government. So, the social media is the second question, the third, I speak and this together. The second question is she wanted to know how you how the how the funds, how how you raise funds for this project. And the third one is she wanted to know how you manage like for Japan they have organization there to help you, but for some countries how you manage, like you go there to connect, or before you go you connect, like how you manage? About the money, uh, so we saved money for several years to do this project. Also, we are an organization, so we apply for funding from foundations that support human rights work. And uh, we don't stay at hotels that much, we camp or we stay with families almost all the time. So we save money on that. We also have an apartment in Sweden that we rent, so we get a little bit of rent every month. So there's like different ways for, for the money, basically. And the third question um, about contact. So most countries we've been to, there's no support group for Western Zora. So we usually, I guess, several hours a day, we sit and we just Google human rights organization Taiwan, social movement Taiwan, feminist organization Taiwan, environment Taiwan, I don't know, everything we can think about, universities, and we email everyone we find. And uh, someone answers, and then that's how it starts. And usually we try to find a couple of people that are like the, someone that can be, that has a lot of contacts, like Sunny here, and who will help us in many places that we go to. 所以他們其實在這個旅行當中常常都是坐在電腦很多個小時然後去找到所有的組織之後全部都寄信出去然後試著找到當地比較多就是可以做串聯的人就像他們在台灣有我幫他們做串聯這個大概是這樣 uh, okay, uh, I wanted to ask about Israel. Have you contacted people in Israel? Are there any organizations that support you? How has, how has the response been? from Israel, because, I mean, I, I know the, the state of Israel, they do a lot of evil, <laughs> but it's not like everyone in Israel is bad, you know that, right? So I want to know how the how the, the, the situation has been with them. Um, so we, we haven't done that. Uh, recently, Israel recognized Morocco's sovereignty over Western Sahara, being the second country in the world to do so after the US in exchange for Morocco recognizing its occupation of Palestine. So on a governmental level, yeah, they're among the two worst countries. And on a civil society level, I feel like it's just strange reaching out to uh, some groups, like the groups we could reach out to would be maybe Ben Salem, the Israeli Center for Human Rights, but they're quite busy. 
with their own human rights record already. I don't know if they could take more on. And uh, other civil society groups that aren't already like anti-occupation groups, I think it would be just weird asking them to support, I don't know, a struggle for independence against occupation when they're not already supporting the one that they're currently engaging in. So the only groups we could reach out to, I think they're too busy within their own context. But it would be interesting. I think those connections should be made one day, and also by the Palestinians. Uh, but the Palestinians, they want the support of Morocco also, <laughs> so it's, it's bad on both fronts. Okay. Ah,他们的状况也很严重,所以我问他们, <笑> 但真的就很期待有一天可以能够跟他们合作我有些回饋這樣子,就是其實在一開始他們分享就是這個國家的歷史的時候,我其實也是想到台灣,就是我們也有點類似是,we take take by Japanese and after that we was for China want to take us, so it's kind of like uh, 就是民族自決這件事情 uh, she wants to uh, say thank you to you guys for coming to Taiwan. Yeah, uh, she, she said when we were first uh, talking about the history of West Sahara, she think of the situation of Taiwan because uh, in Ta yeah, it, uh, yeah, we, we were colonized by Japan and then Ta China wants to take us. Uh, so for, for many Taiwanese people, we also think that uh, since we it we want to be an independent country and we want to be our own boss. Yeah, so she, she can relate their situation to our uh, to us. And so she she wants to thank you for bringing this uh, uh, information to us and uh, I think that impact us a lot. Yeah, she also said because Taiwan seems not to be on the planet. Yeah, but she don't know why you come to Taiwan, but she appreciate that. 刚刚我忘记翻译那个以色列巴勒斯坦的占领那以色列认可摩洛哥的那个西沙拉的占领那当然第一个国家就是强大帝国美国那当然第一个国家就是强大帝国美国 If they don't ask questions, actually I would like you to share your experience that you talk about 
for you, Lin Sui, that you, you feel like uh, feminine, female, you know, like women are not treated so good in so many places that, Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not, Sweden is not perfect, of course. There, we also have inequality between men and women. Women still earn less than men, for example. We still have sexual harassment. But I think the difference is, I feel like when we are traveling to other countries, I am treated differently because I'm a woman, which doesn't really happen that much in Sweden. Like. I feel like when we have meetings, people look at at you all the time when they speak to us and not at me. Or they are like, it's not always, sometimes it's subtle, but I notice like the way people behave and how they think that uh, I am your secretary or something. I don't know. Like it's it's this feeling and the, it's hard to explain, but I don't feel like that in Sweden, but I feel like that in other countries. Maybe it's better here in uh, Taiwan. Yeah, I'll think about it. <laughs> okay, 我剛剛說如果沒有人問題可以請他分享他他私底下跟我講的一件事就是聊天的時候講到他說瑞典當然不是一個完美的國家或是他們就沒有這些什麼不平等的問題因為瑞典的女生的薪水平均薪資還是低
I'm wondering uh, if you, because you, you guys do the, the project together, have you ever like arguing, arguing or fight about things? And how do you uh, figure, figure it out? Thank you. I mean, we are with each other 24 7 when we are hungry, when we are tired, when we are, you know, in the worst situation. So, of course, we fight. Uh, sometimes it's very, in, like, small things, like just he wants to stop and eat food, and I want to wait one hour, and that's our fight, maybe. <laughs> like, it's very ridiculous. Um, so, I think usually. We just have to wait until we are not so hungry or until we're not so tired, and then it's okay. Uh, that's most of our fights, I think, like the small things, and it's just because we are tired and frustrated, and we need to be alone, but we are together all the time. <laughs> 呃，就是刚刚他问他们说，你们在这个计划执行过程会不会两个人吵架，或是有面对一些冲突？那你们要怎么解决它？他说当然有，因为他们是这样子二十四小时，然后一个礼拜七天完全紧密相处，然后去哪都是这样子一起行动，然后在所有的呃状态里面，高兴的、难过的、困难的、很累的，他们都是相处在一起的。所以他们通常是会很无聊的事情吵架，比如说 Benjamin 现在想吃饭，可是 s a r a 想要等一个小时之后再吃饭，就是为这种事吵。但通常等到他们都不饿了，就是都吃饱了，然后这件事过去其实都没事，这样讲好就没事。但是他说其实是真的蛮困难，因为他们都需要自己的空间，可是在这个旅行过程中很难有自己的空间。And also, I think it's important if you do a project together like this. You have to talk a lot about like planning and who does what because it can be very hard otherwise. Uh, so we regularly talk about like who should answer this email or I don't know who should plan um, who where we should sleep sleep next week. Like if we don't plan together, then then it will be more like hard to agree on things. That, 然后他说到执行这样的计划，这个分工是真的很重要。他们要不断的进行很大量、很大量的沟通、讨论、确定说，啊，那这个是你负责回，这个 email 我回，然后这个你来计划，然后这个部分你来处理，这个住宿你安排，然后要不断不断的 check， 然后去沟通这样，不然在这个计划是蛮困难。好，大家没有问题了吗？那我们来拍个合照。